Hi there, I'm Andrew, you are tonight Gamer Ajax, and welcome back to the tabletop. Now, when it comes to Cyberpunk Red, we've discussed a few of the basics on how to make a character and a little bit of an overview of the system, but let's go ahead and dive right into my favorite part of character creation when it comes to Cyberpunk Red, which is running a life path. Now, the reason that a life path is my favorite part of character creation is because it gives you an entire backstory that can be generated by random tables, or you can pick a couple of things. Um, just from a general chart that is laid out in front of you. And if you are doing this with your Game Master, this is going to make it so you can have a very in-depth character and it gives them plenty of uh, plot hooks that involve your character specifically. So I figured that the best way to demonstrate how a life path system works is that we can do this in real time. Now, if you have the core rulebook, uh, this starts on page 43 of that rulebook, and you can follow along, but I'll just make sure that we have a couple of photos so that we can kind of get a general sense of what we are doing. So for this demonstration, we have a newly minted uh, fixer in Night City, and he will be going under the alias of Axis. So uh, we are going to be starting with the cultural origins of this character, and just for the sake of simplicity on this one, uh, I have decided to choose that this character is going to be North American, and the primary language that he's going to know is English, just to keep things nice and simple for me. So. From there, you move on and you select your character's personality. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 10 of die, we're going to roll and consult the chart. So that is a five. So Axis is going to be a picky, fussy, and nervous kind of character. And you can already see where this is going to be a lot of fun to kind of role play this character. You can already see that despite the fact he's a fixture, he's maybe going to be a little antsy, going to be nervous. Maybe somebody's gunning for him. We don't know why he is the way that he is yet. So from there, we'll be moving on to dress and personal style. And this is something that I think is interesting because it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone a little bit in terms of how you might design a character. So first, we're going to go with that clothing style. Again, we're rolling a D10. That is a four, which means that, okay, so he has business wear, which means that uh, he's going to be a very formal but very anxious person. I'm already interested in this. Now for general hair style, we again did the same thing. Wild colors. <laughs> okay, I did not see that coming. This is going to be a very, very interesting character already. So I'm already picturing this character is going to probably have longer hair and is going to have it dyed all kinds of different colors. Maybe it, you know, makes a pattern or something like that. Uh, so in terms of uh, something that your character is never without, is going to be Fingerless gloves. Uh, funny enough, <laughs> this is the same thing that I've had with another character. So, despite the fact that he is wears formal attire, this is going to be a character that you know still has that little bit of punk to him. Maybe that's going to be affected by general backstory. Uh, it could be that maybe he was punk in the streets, but then decided to try presenting himself as a little bit more of a, a corpo, more more formal in that case. In terms of how this character feels about money and how they feel about people, that is. The thing that he values most is honor, and when it comes to people, he remains neutral, which makes sense as a fixer. This is a person that's going to be working with all kinds of different people, get all kinds of different connections, so you really can't have strong feelings one way or the other. Okay, now, when it comes to like a person that matters the most to this character, that is himself. So you can already see how this is making a very complicated, complex, and very fun character in my opinion. Okay, so most valued possession is going to be a tool. Now, being a fixer, this is a person that's going to work with a lot of people. He's going to be working on getting jobs for a lot of people. So we can kind of, you know, this is where you work with your game master on what that tool might be exactly. And this is going to be something they probably either like keep locked or they're going to keep on their person at all times. Now, now that we've kind of established the overall like aesthetics for this character, we're going to dive a lot more into the general background. So there's also, you know, your original family background. This is, the, you know, kind of like your character's upbringing. So, oh, this is a person that was from my Ganger family. So it means that, you know, we already talked about the fact that this character might be a little more punk, a little bit more uh, kind of streetwise, which makes sense as to why they are wanting to be a fixer. So in this case, you know, this is a person that was raised in a gang, which would make sense with, you know, some of the way that some of the mannerisms. It could also explain why the fact this character might be a little paranoid, might be a little nervous around other people. Now we're going to choose that childhood environment, 
which was in a decaying, once upscale neighborhood now holding off the boosters to survive. So hey, would you look at that? That works out perfectly. Uh, let's see what the family crisis was. Let's see, family was exiled or otherwise driven from their original home, nation, or corporation. Okay, so like, and again, you're seeing where a lot of these origins are really gonna make sense for this character. Uh, now, the last couple of things that we have are deciding friends, enemies, and former lovers. So what you'll do is that there are instructions for this, which is, you know, you, again, roll a d10, you subtract a certain number from it, uh, and then you will see what you get. So, let's see, how many, what, what kind of friend does this character have? Let's see, we got that 10, that was really close to my character, was a, a teacher or a mentor. Maybe this was somebody from that gang or family that taught him how to start working on connections or maybe fixing things up. And I might explain why a tool is his most preferred, like his most valued item. All right, so now, last thing that we do is we, or one of the last things that we do is we decide enemies that this character has. Let's see, all right. So luckily this character doesn't have any notable enemies so far. Uh, and with that, the last thing that we really have, we have two more things, which are going to be uh, tragic love affairs and uh, the character's life goal. So let's see, how many love affairs does this character have? Let's see. Oh, okay, so this character's lover mysteriously vanished. And you can already see where that's a great plot hook for a character. It gives them a drive or reason to be doing what they are doing. Uh, and then lastly, character's life goal. We got seven. Get what's rightfully yours. And again, this is something that you can work with your game master to determine what that might be. Um, and here we have, we've gone through running a character's entire life path and now you see that, hey, you have a complex, complicated, very competent character that has been built over the span of minutes. And this is just one character. There are so many things that you can do from there. And personally, like Axis is a character I would like to play in the future and I probably will be playing in the future. Uh, we already have this here. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long at all. There's a reason that this is one of my favorite things. Now, granted, you can always come up with some of these details on your own. Feel free to tweak whatever you need to make the character that you want to make. Just make sure that you're working with your game master in it. And you don't even have to roll on these charts if you don't want, if something really sticks out to you, just pick that instead. Make sure that your game master knows about it and you are going to be good to go. So this is gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I just wanted to highlight the fact that this is one of my favorite character generation methods. Um, I have had nothing but fun just even rolling up random characters on it before. And with the characters that I have played with it, like I really love uh, just how many plot hooks and like aesthetic choices. And, it, it, and again, for me, I like doing the random rolls because it makes something entirely unique. So. I always end these with a question, and I just would like to know, what is your favorite character that you've played in Cyberpunk, whether it's 2020 or Red, or you know other editions of the game? Uh, what made them stick out to you? So if you would please comment below. If you liked the video, give it that thumbs up. And if you want to see a little bit more about what I'm doing here on the channel, maybe consider subscribing. It really does, really does mean a lot to me if you choose to do that. But hey, until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.